praise God. Hey, I said praise God. Amen. How are you? Hi, Ima. Hi, Ona. Yeah, seems like we are settling down. Uh, has the conference been a blessing to you so far? Yeah, it was meant to be. Uh, but the blessings are different from what you thought because it's a sharpening, it's a redirection of your life, it's a reengineering of your mind, and that is happening day by day. Now, I'd like us to go back to where we are looking at the book of Ephesians, the, the Pauline epistles to the Ephesians. Uh, we say it was written to show you how rich you are. Uh, you can get the themes from chapter 1, verse 3, that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings from heavenly places, in heavenly places. Uh, you can get that from uh, the inheritance that he has given to us, Ephesians 1, and verse 19, the riches the, of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints. So that power that he has given to us, he has already released to us everything that we would need. And therefore, our position in prayer is a place of preparing ourselves to receive, not demanding to be given, because God has already given to us. And we started by reading the book of Acts, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 10. We talked about how God has ordained Christ that he should, everything shall be subject to him. And when you get into prayer, you realize that God's purpose is that he put everything under the feet of his son. In fact, he says that the families of heaven and earth shall be united under Christ. And so Christ is the ultimate, the supreme, the omniscient, the omnipresent, that everything is in accordance to his will. Even when he says in Ephesians 3.10 that the manifold wisdom of God might be known to principalities and powers by the church. So it is important to notice that when you get into prayer, it is not a demand. It's not a shopping list. Prayer is a place of relationship. Why you go to prayer is to build relationship, not to get things. Things are gotten as a result of your association. There are things that you get not by demand, but by inher uh, heritage. There are so many things that you get not on, by demand. There are things that prayer cannot deliver. They are delivered by relationships. However much you demand, if you're not in relationship, you cannot get them. Uh, how many here consider themselves to be good sons or to be good daughters in their homes? How, how many consider at least? Uh, at least I try my best. How many? How many consider themselves to be grateful to their parents for what they have done, for their, what have they, they have sacrificed? How many? Now, let me ask, how many here of all the grateful people that have lifted up their hands, how many people wake up every morning to ask their parents, please, Dad, today provide me breakfast, please, and lunch and dinner. Please provide for me a place to stay. Please provide me a room to sleep in every single morning. How many? You see the ungrateful people? Hmm? Why? Why don't you ask that? Yeah? Because you are a son, isn't it? You are a daughter, isn't it? And you have a parent. And what parents do is to provide. True? So that means that accommodation to you and uh, your meals are provided and your clothing is provided and your school fees is provided not because you asked about it, but because of your relationship. It's delivered to you because you are related to them. And there are things that God will deliver to you because of heritage. Not because you've asked for, but because you have a son. So if you want to know why the things you are demanding are not being answered, you don't ask about the technicalities of your prayer. You ask about you are sonship. Are you a son? 
Because a son receives everything that is guaranteed to a son. That's why you'll notice when Jesus is praying, Jesus is not begging. In fact, in most of the times that Jesus is praying, he's not praying for himself. He's praying because of others. He says, Lord, I know you always hear me, but because of the people around me. Meaning, I'm a witness. I want to witness to these people. I would not even pray. But because of these guys, let me say it anyway. You understand? So he's in a place where, as a son, he's able to receive whatever he asks. And the Bible says that if you follow my commandments, then you ask anything. And he said, John 14, 12, he says that if you believe in me, the things that I do shall you do also. And greater things than this shall you do because I go to my Father. We said the attitude of prayer is a place of relationship, not a place of demand that you have a list of demands. You're saying, I'm going to that Kesha. I've written down my prayer list. Those are the things today I want to demand of God. Because most of us, and let me change your theology a little bit. Uh, most of us go to a place of worship to receive something, to receive ministry, to receive something from God. If you look at the place of prayer and the place of worship, God never ordained a place of worship to be a place of giving. Because when you give, it means you are the object of worship. It means that you are the object. You are the most important person in worship. Yet in worship, the most important person is God. Because you are giving, you are ascribing. The Bible says, ascribe unto the Lord glory due to his name. Psalms 29, ascribe unto the Lord. And when Pharaoh uh, listened to Moses, Moses said, let my people go so that they may worship me. He said, how many shall, shall you go? He said, all of you shall go. He said, with what shall you go? He said, we shall go with our silver and our gold, our head, our cattle, because we do not know of what our God is going to demand of us. Meaning, we want to take everything to give. Shiloh was a place of giving. He used to carry something to give. It was a place of giving. So when you come to worship, you are coming to a place of giving. A place of prayer is not a place of reception. It's a place of giving. Giving yourself, giving your time, giving your heart. Because you give yourself in, in prayer. Prayer is a place of... How do you feel when you have a friend and he's called you for some coffee, but you know he wants something from you? How do you feel? You, do you feel excited? That everything he's saying, ata to story to water na anakwambia, unajua, eventually. How do you feel? Do you feel excited? But how do you feel when somebody just is just there for you, just asking? And most of us say we are waiting on God. When we talk about prayer, I say, hey, Maze, I'm waiting on God. Do you know what waiters do? Waiters stand, traditionally, West, waiters in a big hotel just stand and wait. Meaning, what can I do for you, sir? Do you need something else? Waiter is seeking for the needs of the person you are waiting on. But most people, when they say, I'm waiting, it means nangojea something. Nangojea nipewa something. Waiting does not mean you want to receive something. Wait, waiting means you want to give something. Say, sir, can I bring you some water? Sir, do you need anything else? That is waiting. So when you wait on God, it means you are seeking for relationship. And the most important thing for you in prayer is to understand his ways. Psalms chapter 1 or 3, verse 7, he says, And he made known his ways unto Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. He made known his ways unto Moses. Uh, Psalms 1 or 3, verse 7. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. You see, Moses understood God. He understood his ways. But the acts... Provisions was being given to Israelites. They, they received the providence, but they didn't know how. But Moses understood the principles of God. He understood God. He says, if you go before God, you don't ask this. You don't behave this way. See, if you have served somebody for a long time, you'll know. This is what makes him happy. This is what makes him mad. This is what he likes. So I want to take him what he likes. I want to serve him with what he likes. That is understanding his ways. 
If somebody says, I understand the ways of my friend, that means I understand his conversations. I know that there are certain conversations that I cannot uh, initiate around my friend because I know his ways. I understand his rhythm. I understand his passion. And when you are in prayer and you understand the passion of God and his intention, your prayer becomes very easy because you pray in accordance to his will. Jesus said a statement and he said, my father works and I do likewise. I do not do something that I have not seen my father do. That means that's why Jesus' life was very easy because he just looked at his father, saw what he was doing, and he did it. Even in healing, Jesus did not heal everyone. He healed those whom he's, he saw the father's hand upon. He saw people that God was healing and he touched them. You understand? But if you don't know that, you'll be doing everything in ministry, thinking that you're working for God. But my father, what I see my father do, the son does nothing of himself, but what he sees his father do. So yesterday we, uh, we talked about Ephesians 1.15 and to around 19. We said that your eyes being enlightened, you may know the hope of your calling. Uh, and we talked about the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. We said that God will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. We are talking about the prayer of enlightenment. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, 15 to, uh, to 22. The prayer of enlightenment. That God will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That your eyes being enlightened, you may know the hope of your calling. And we talked about that hope. So that is the prayer you pray. Uh, you, you see, the content of prayer is about knowing God. It's not about attaining things. Because if you want to know God and his purpose, then God resources your purpose on the face of the earth. Because you're asking, why do I need this? Why do I need another cloth? Why do I need this? Why do I need this school? Why? Because it is related to the purpose of God for my life. That you may know the, his riches of his glory in the inheritance of the saints. How rich you are. And he says, and the exceedingly great power towards us who believe according to his mighty working power. He says that this great power to us word, meaning that there is a power, the same power that rose Jesus from the dead is the same power that is at work inside of us. So you are not left alone. Huh? I want to know. Paul was praying for the fashion. Let them know the power that is at, dis at their disposal. That they may know. Most Christians do not know the power they have. Most Christians do not know the power they have. They live like victims. And I told you how victims look like. Umetoboa eh? lakini you barely made it. We shall a bomb as victim. Yule ambaye ni roho imebaki tu. Hmm? No limbs, no nothing. You are not a victim of salvation. The power of God has been revealed, released towards you. Greater power. The same power that Jesus worked with is the same power at your disposal. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it says that you shall receive power after this. The Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. The same power that was healing people and raising the dead the same power has been released upon you, that you shall know the power towards us and the exceeding great power to us as we believe according to his mighty working power. The same power, the Bible says, that he wrote in Jesus, meaning he worked in Jesus. When he raised him up from the dead and has seated him on his right hand side and has lifted him beyond every power, principality, and every force and every ruler, not only in this time but also in the age to come. The same power is at work. And God is no respecter of persons. Acts chapter 10 verse 34. He's no respecter of persons. The same way he's using somebody else is the same way that he's going to use you. That power has been released to a 13-year-old. That power has been released to an 11-year-old. That you can trample upon scorpions and serpents. That you can rule over your, your, your life and over your sphere of life. That God has enabled you because the power that God gives you is not the power for religion. It's the power for government. It's the power for rulership. 
is not power to be equipped to do religious stuff mm -hmm. and to put on some religious clothes and to put on, you know, there are people who come in church and they learn our language and they start to recite it. You might think they are changing, but they have not. They are just learning. They know how to recite it. They know how to walk. They know how to talk like us, but they are not of us, scripture says. Their life has not been transformed. They are not interested with their life transforming, no. But they have learned our language. They look like us. They are the cones in the church because they look like us, but they are not like us. But if you know that there is power inside of you, not only power not to sin, but the power over sin. You see, when somebody tells you, I want financial freedom, what is financial freedom? Financial freedom is not just to have all the money you want that you can buy whatever you want. Financial freedom actually includes the power to have all the money and not buy anything. That is power, isn't it? That you have all the money, but no pressure at all. Unajua kuna watu ambao awana freedom kwa mind, si ati pesa awana. Kwa sababu wakipata pesa, lazima spend. Lazima, unataka nini, nikubaye nini, nikubaye nini. Because pesa inamuasha. Ajazoea kuwa na pesa. So, lazima i reduce ifike kama 500, kama iyo ndiyo capacity yake. Awezi kuwa na zaidi ya iyo. But financial freedom means that you have power not to purchase a thing. So the power that God has given us is not the, just power away from sin. That's why Rebecca was saying, this is not where you ought to live. You are supposed to be equipped here so that you go. Ephesians 1, uh, 4, 12. He says, for the perfecting of the saints unto the works of ministry, isn't it? That the pastors, pre, uh, evangelists, uh, apostles, teachers are not for ministry. They are not called to do ministry. They are called to equip people to do ministry, to equip you so that you can go out there and do ministry. So you are the minister in the house. Minister, see you, Lana's mama, apa. Uyu ni equipa. Uyu anaku equip. So that you go back to that school, you go back to that university, to that workplace, and do ministry. Are you understanding that? So when you come to a place of prayer, Ask for important things. Ask for important things. Ask God. Wisdom. Wis how can I get wisdom? How can I get knowledge? How can I understand the power that works within me? So you'll find that the first prayer of Paul is praying for very simple things. He's praying that God will give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That God is going to open their eyes to see the hope of their calling. That God is going to help them understand the riches, how rich they are in God, and that God is going to help them understand the power they have as believers. Simple. And his prayer is done. Prayer for enlightenment. If you go to chapter 3, verse 14, he says, I bow before the Almighty Father, the creator of heaven and earth. Now he says, and he's making a prayer. Come on, give us 14. 14, uh, 15, of whom the whole family in heaven and on earth is named. Give us 16. 16. Read with me. 16 says. Are you seeing what Paul is praying? He's saying that the first prayer for you from me is that you be strengthened by his spirit in the inner world. Eh? In the inner man. Uh, he's not praying for a smooth face. Uh -uh. He's not praying for a six pack. Eh? <laughs> he's praying that your inner man must be strengthened. Do you know that if you strengthen your inner man, then the outside is going to follow? Most of us, even people, Ever met a beautiful woman, the girl that everybody thinks this is beautiful, but you talk to her, she's a mess. Terrible identity, no self-esteem like you call it, no self-actualization. What is the other self you talk about? Self-awareness. Self-what? What else? Nothing of those self. 
Hmm? And then you're wondering, with all these looks, Kumbet is not the outside appearance. It's how you look inside. Because once you look beautiful inside, you look beautiful outside. Isn't it? So he's saying, be strengthened by the spirit in the inner man. Let your inner man grow. Let it be strong. Let it develop. Let it mature. Because once you are, you are okay inside there, that your spirit man is strong, there's nothing that is going to shake you. There's nobody who is going to confuse you. And when he was talking about, by the way, chapter 4, verse 12, 13, he was saying, uh, when he was talking about for the perfecting of the saints, uh, for the works of ministry, for the edification of the church, until we come to the unity of faith unto and the knowledge of Jesus Christ unto a perfect man, until we reach to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, he says now that now you'll be not tossed, isn't it? That henceforth you'll be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in one to dece deceive. That means once your inner man is strengthened, you cannot be deceived. And deception is not just religious deception. It's also love deception, isn't it? Hello, Mzupa. Box, evil. Then after a while, unashindwa. Eh? Niliona nini exactly? Huh? And I don't understand myself. What was I thinking? Deception. Why? Your inner man is not strengthened. When your inner man is not strengthened, you are tossed to and fro. You don't have stability of life. You don't have purpose of life. You are not stable. And the Bible says you are like double-minded. You do not know what you want in life. When you do not know what you want in life, everybody is going to give you a reason to serve their purpose. So if your inner man is strengthened, he says by the spirit that you be strong in the inner man. Inner man. Talk to your inner man and say be strong. Feed your inner man. Hmm? Most of us, when you look at you, there is no problem. Uh, the, the, there is no doubt that your outer man is well fed. Huh? No doubt at all. But how about your inner man, your inner person? And don't put on a charade like you want to appear like you're cool. Hmm? Like when they look at you, they say, hey, we are super nakwanga. Very happy, always. Kumbe, that is a picture. I don't know, some of us who read a poem in high school used to say, um, what is, is this, once upon a time. How many people have ever read that poem? Once upon a time, I used to laugh with my heart and laugh with my eyes. Once upon a time, I used to shake hands with my heart. But now, after I've grown, what do I do? I've learned to put on masks. There's office face, there's friendly face. There is church face. There is the crew face, isn't it? And when I greet people, I can say, good to see you, without feeling good at all. Goodbye, without feel, with feeling inside good riddance. Eh? So those faces, hi, good to see you. Anajifanyanga sana. So in my heart, what I'm meaning is very different, but I put on faces for everybody. So if you do that, then you live, anytime you live a conflicted life, you are a disaster in yourself. Because you, if you can't reconcile yourself, you have not reached the unity of yourself. Meaning, you know you have another personality, another lifestyle, to get, uh, uh, besides what you are showing people. Then that means you cannot have, be in a place of peace. Because peace only comes with unity, isn't it? Peace only comes at the place of unity. So Paul is praying for them that you be strengthened by the spirit in your inner man, that your inner man, he was not interested in knowing how good they are doing outside here because the Bible says that I know no man out of the flesh. He was not knowing people like this. And that's why the Bible tells you to be like a child because a child, a child's relationship is built on the spirit, not on the flesh. Ukienda ku visit a friend, Mahali, and Amtoto. 
na hata ubebe chocolate na nini na nini mtoto akikukataa na kukataa tu whatever you do have you ever witnessed that nasema songea karibu na anko salimia anko eh mimi sitaki then you find another awkward rugged man who was not even bathed anakuja mtoto wako tu na yeye anasema ende ni mcheze nje ah ah mimi nataka anko ende ni mcheze nje why he has sensed their spirit are okay because once the child's spirit has agreed then outside here does not matter but what about us we are so carnal that we relate to people according to what we see unaona that is my class that is that girl's hair is like mine huyo tunaweza pelekana eh huyo anaweza afford the places i go then you be a friend but they don't last long anyway just look around hata wale tulishikana mkono tukija conference atuko pamoja sai si ndio wale walikuwa kwa chai eh hey, umekaa wapi <laughs> sai unaona hey, where is your friend he is still in the conference why because you are using your flesh so he was telling them be strong be strong be strengthened in the inner man give us that verse when you are strengthened in the inner man you exercise your inner man when you exercise your inner man then you become strong hebrew says that milk belongs to babes but strong meat belongs to those who are adult who by reason of use have known how to exercise and distinguish between good and evil strengthening just comes from exercise when you exercise your spirit then you become stronger give us that verse wow my time is running till we all come in the unity of faith and the knowledge of the son of god hatuko hapo tuko chapter 3 chapter 3 verse 16 there about that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man verse 17 that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that he being rooted that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith are you seeing that the prayer of paul to the ephesian church was that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith there is a dwelling there is a dwelling of god in our hearts because there is a visitation most of us want a visitation lord we want you to visit but paul is praying for the church that god I want God to dwell within you by faith. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall do what? Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I surely he shall deliver you from Huh? Eh? You started with the good energy. What has happened? Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and hmm? he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings shall shall thou shall thou eh What happened? Au jamaliza hiyo Bible study. So we shall not be afraid of the terror by and the arrow that flieth or the pestilence that Huh? A thousand shall and 10,000 shall but they shall not why because hmm? thou shall see the reward of the wicked isn't it <laughs> <coughs> 
It says, because thou hast made the Lord, even thy God, thy habitation. If you have made the Lord, even thy God, thy habitation. He says, may God dwell inside of you by faith. There is a dwelling, you must create a dwelling place for God. It is not events. You know, we have Christianity today that is activity driven. I know by the time you're finishing this conference, you're waiting for the next big thing. Like when is the next worship experience now? Maybe it will be in September, thereabout. When is the be best big thing? So in here we are just dry, but we are waiting for an activity to jumpstart our engine. So it says, let the Lord or oh God dwell in you by faith. That was the prayer of Paul to the Ephesians. That everywhere you go, whether you are intertown or you are in semester, wherever you are, you're visiting, let God dwell in you by faith. How many people have you ever prayed like that? That you took some time and said, Lord, please strengthen my faith. But I become you, God conscious, that I may know and understand your presence in me. Hmm? Because if you know God is here, he's not there, then even your prayer changes. There is a, there is a way you talk to somebody near you, and there is a way you talk to somebody who is far away. Hmm? Because if it's far away, you are trying to reach, you are trying to bombard, you are trying to, huh? to find out if you can reach. And in your mindset also, there are so many obstacles to reach him. Hmm? If God wanted to do something, <laughs> what can stop God to do something that he wants to do? Kunakito? Huh? So unafikiria wewe ndi unaweza mtolea obstacle. God, I want to remove every obstacle that can stand in your way. Wewe. <laughs> if the sovereign Lord wants to shake this place, hmm? the voice of the Lord thunders, Psalms 29, the voice of the Lord thunders like mighty waters. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The, Lord, the voice of the Lord shakes the desert of Mekadish. Ascribe unto the Lord glory due to his name. Nothing can stop him to do what he wants to do. Hmm? He, the creator of the great Leviathan. Have you ever read those, those scriptures? Unaelewa Leviathan ni nani? Aujafika uko? Nimesikia bado tuko kwa songs of songs. There is nothing, absolutely nothing that can stop him. So he says, let God dwell inside of you by faith. See that kind of prayer? Let me finish and go into something else. Give us that verse. To my talk, I will call it. But here, Ephesians 3, yes. That Christ may dwell in you, your house by faith, that he being rooted and grounded in what? Hmm? Continue 18. Continue with the same thought. May be able to comprehend with all sense what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height. Are you understanding? The thing you're feeling is not love. There is love. And God says, I want you to understand what love is. The height, the breadth, the width of, her, of love. You may be able to comprehend. Because, Lord, I know you love me. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know how he loves you. You don't know. You have no clue, no idea at all. Because even the way you live, you have no clue. You know, your understanding of God's love upon you is, is shown or manifested by how you live. Hmm? That's why he says your love compels me. Meaning what? That now you are coming out of sin is not because the, somebody says it is wrong. No. The love of God inside of you compels you. You don't drink, not because somebody has said drinking is bad. No, the love of God. You can't do, that's why Joseph says, I can't do this to my God. I can't do this. It's not possible. Hmm? I can't be in a street, in a, in a dark place with, with you because the love of God compels. No, not because my pastor says it's wrong. 
Uh -uh. The love of God. How I love God and how he loves me. It's too much. Huh? I can't do this. Your love compels me. So he says, I want you that you may be able to comprehend that you are deeply rooted in love. Because <laughs> once you are deeply rooted in love, you will not be confused with the little infatuations of this world. No. Because it's incomparable. Do you want to understand the, the depth of love? How deep love is? <laughs> That a man, while you are still running away from him, he died. He gave his all to you. He says, no, I, if he, I can't have him, I'd rather die. Hmm? I can't be alone. I must have him. I'd rather die. And he died for you. That love is deep. That love is beyond anything that your heart can ever comprehend. Nile love ambayo ineza lipua your heart. You can have internal bleeding because of this love. I wish you prayed, God, you took some time and God, help me to understand your love. Not these things you're praying about. Eh? Or this witchcraft you're doing. By fire, by thunder. By come against you, by fire. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Every no, please. S sit in a closet prayer. The, wherever the water runs deep is silent, isn't it? And do you know that sheep does not drink where the water is, is cruel? Sheep drinks, that's why he said, still water, still waters. Kondo ana kunywa tu mahali kuna still waters. Hmm? Na ukitaka kujua kwa, kwa mto, a river where it is deepest, the waters are still. Sinikweli? So, when you, are, you, have, you now arrive to a place of stillness in prayer, we know you are now getting deep. Wachana hiya ya nini? Oh, nani ya deep? Akianza. Ta 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 Come on, people. Ta, 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 ta. Be violent in prayer. Nani ya likuambia? Ukiwa even di uko violent? <laughs> Bibile inasema in the book of Acts, the saints prayed until the place they were standing or sitting shook. You understand? Squeezing a Christian to a shake. Building him back is same too. The place is still. But the people are shaking. <clears throat> fire, fire. Kimaliza evil. Pasi, I have this emotional challenge. What can I do? I thought it's dropping everything. <laughs> but if you're in a place, you say, Lord, please, that I may be rooted in love. That may I understand your, the breadth, the length, and the height of your love. Eh? Hey. Uki understand the height, the breadth of love. Akuna, you don't need a poster. You don't need a reminder. Come on, people. Uh, come to pray. Lazima tutue poster mzuri. Tutafute a graphic designer. Ndeo kuja prayer meeting. Shida yako siya te ukumbuki. Shida yako ni love. You don't understand the love of God for you. Because huh? the person who understood the love of God like David, you do not know. He told the wife, you do not know. You're seeing me dance until everything drops. And you're thinking, oh, it's public relations. Why are you ashaming yourself before people? He says, no, you, do, you have no clue where God took me from my father's house. And made me king over Israel. You have no clue. That's why it says, I was glad when they said to me, let's go. I was waiting to hear, when are we going to the house of God? When next? When is the next meeting? Squeeze, we are living in a generation of tell a friend to tell a friend. <laughs> tell a friend? Tell a friend. Not a way when you may be a friend, pia umesa how. Hmm? Tell a friend to tell a friend. Now, go, eh? 15 days to go. 14 days to go. They are dead. They are dead. They are dead. There is nothing you can do about it. They are <laughs> you are trying resuscitation. 14 days to go. 15 days to go. Yeah, 12 days. Come on, people. It's ours. Can, can I hear somebody say amen? Eh? It is ours. I know you are listening, people. I know you are listening. Yeah? 
Tunapata kwa WhatsApp watu wawili ndio wame, wame eh? wamechangamka na hiyo. Huyu ana post asubuhi huyu ana post jioni. Unaangalia group members 261. Eh, how does it feel like we are just two? Because you you are the living among the dead. Hmm? Watu wawili wako kwa mochari. Watu wengine hawezi ongea. And do, do you know the, 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 the culture of that when David is writing, I, I was glad when they said to me, when you go to Shiloh, it was not something like you leave your house and go. Ah, ah, ulikuwa unapitia kwa majirani. Guys, it's time. Guys, you're collecting people in their bombers and you're going. Because you would not travel to Shiloh alone. You, ilikuwa ni group. You go. Unapitia kwa so and so, unapitia kwa so and so, tuende. But now... <laughs> God is in my dead. Battery is low. He's saying, I wish you comprehend. The issue we have today is not an issue of reminder, an issue of memory, an issue of programming. It's an issue of love. The, our problem is the problem of love. Once you love him enough, nobody will remind you. Unajua vile tume advertise conference. Ndiyo kuji. Hey. 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 Kuanzia February tunaambia watu kwanza tulianza November tukasema next year iko August Kufika February hakuna mtu anakumbuka Tukaenda 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 posters zikatokea hmm? Ikifika hapo because you do not connect with God you are, you are in this Levitical priesthood where you're looking for a high priest so you're choosing high priests. People come to meetings according to who is coming. Nani atakuwa jioni? Because you have the Levitical mindset. You think somebody will connect you to God. This place, he says, let Christ dwell in you by faith. Meaning, ata ukiwa na drunk adapa siku moja, I still connect. Because my relationship, my connecting to God does not depend on who is standing here. Oh, nani anakamu? Nionyeshe poster. Hmm? I love even then reporting after the meeting you must also tell them how it was because hata ajivile ilikuwa oh, it was epic ilishika it was lit it was like because now you must because it's the consumerist marketing messages that we must push to the people they are consumers huh because the same marketing style of omo is the same marketing we must bring here what is in it for me what am I going to get? Because you are a consumer worshiper. Eh? You do not know that here you come to give. So you are coming to a place of prayer about what I will receive. And the more tantalizing it is, who is going to tantalize you? Who is going to have the, the emotional uplifting? When, hey, nani anakam? Nani anakam? Hmm? Daktari anakam. So holy me kam baka uko. Unapata Johnny Carson pengine anakatu hivyo akasema eh the fashion church was powerful. Sema eh uh, nimeshikika job. Hmm? Because your depth I I'll just I was kizani na You like where I told you the the fish the fish will be at still waters inapatikana hapo. But and a deep place ni mahali maji ikimbi. And uh, if you go to a place that is calm don't dare ever get there because you are going to drown. But Mali, ma, ma, nini ina, ina pita pita. That's where we walk in. And that's most of us where we are. We are in a shallow end. That's why we like the noise. Pa, 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 pa. Eh? Kuna, kuna responsibility squeeze in a hype man. There is a profession even about it. Hype man. <laughs> Work out the people. Emotions too. Huh? This way, that way. This way, that way. Iyo ilishika, iyo. Eh? Eh? Then the worship team, eh? Twende chini, twende ju, twende chini, twende ju. Then unamaliza mkutano. Nashindua. Pastor, I even don't understand what is happening with me. Of course. Of course you may not understand. Mwili mechanganyikiwa, you've shocked and everything inside of you. Demons <laughs> But 
what if you pray this? Be rooted in God. And then you understand the breadth and the height and the width of God. Ah, you are calm in his presence. You like where the stillness, because that's where wisdom is. Give us the next verse as I close. Ukombali san. We are to deal with that today, but our time is not. Chapter 3. Grounded in love, 18. That you may understand, be able to comprehend with all sense what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, 19. And to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that he might be filled with all the fullness of who? God's purpose is to fill you with his fullness. Eh? What percent are you doing right now? Are you a quarter full? Ama, you are running on empty. Why did you come to this conference? The purpose of God is to f f fill you with his fullness. And that, imagine, Paul in prison is praying for the Ephesian church. He's saying, God, I'm praying that you might be filled with his fullness. My sisters and brothers, I want you to be filled with his fullness. He was not saying, no, come, come and touch this handkerchief. Oh, come and drop something. Oh, come, and you receive it. No, saying, I want you to be filled with his fullness. That everywhere you go, people are going to see this is full of God. Now, now you your fullness of God in the Alisema. Now, Enoch was no more. Eh? You'll be filled with, as I decrease, like John says, I decrease and you increase. Sayoni, 20% me, 80% God. 30% me, 70% God. 50% me, 50% God. I'm growing. 70% me, uh, God, 30% me. 20% me, 80% God, 10% me, 90%, 100% God, I am no more. I'm taken. Sasa wanaangalia wewe msichana anasema, wow. Wewe si yule njeri. What happened to you? You may change. You are not the same. Why? You are gone. You are not here. Because you have been filled with what? With God. Sio na smocha. Umejawa na mungu. You are God addict. Yani you can't do without him. Wewe ni mungu umejawa na? Not the things you've filled. Unajua ume feel movie, pornography, whatever. And say, Pastor, what can I do? I'm a sex addict. How did you come there? Ulikula, 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 mpaka ukaja. Sindio? Sasa we mwenye wezi jikontrol. It's out of control. Isn't it? You become an agent of the devil himself. But God wants you to be his agent, to be filled with God. Look at that prayer. Isn't it interesting that even our needs are by the ways. Jesus says if you pray, pray in this manner. He says our Father white in heaven, hallowed be, hey, hallowed be, thy kingdom, thy will be done, as it is. Kufikia hapo na karibu tunamaliza, umeona tukiombea magari? Tukiombea na nini? Then anasema, give us this day our, how many lines are those? Una mention to Peter, then unaendelea unasema, and forgive us, uh, as we forgive those who, and then he says, but deliver us, for thine is the, the power, and unanza na his glory, his kingdom, his will, unamaliza na his power, his glory, his kingdom. Your needs are just like this. Now where is the place of repentance ile unasemanga repent inapatikana wapi mwanzo Our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy thy kingdom thy will imagine bada uja confess bada ujalia oh guy eh unasema 
We are not worthy. Kila mutu. Repent, repent, repent for two hours. Kwanza uwe msafi because you think niki, niki jisafisha sana nita... nita. Hey, you know you can't enter the presence of God when you are like this. Yeah? So you know how you are. So, wase, kila mtu kakona yake, inaitua repentance. <laughs> Kabla tujaanza shopping list. So, unakuja kwa prayer meeting, kila mtu, oh God, hey, hey, nitakase, hey, then, then unaona, after two hours unaona, hey, sasa niko msafi. Sasa baba. We don't have prayers that are ridiculous. You imeanza around 10. 10, 10 even do in a kwanga imeanza kushika sasa worship team yiko hapo. Worship sasa. Everybody just go before the Lord. Ujitakase, ujinini. Siju nani elsema uneza jitakasa. Ujitakase, jinini. Oh, Father Lord. Eh. Unajua ni kiongea na jemo. I didn't, I didn't plan it. Eh. Yeah, and I lied. Two, two hours. Hiyo inakuanga two hours. Sana sana. Uh, on average. In an average church. Nakuanga kama two hours. Sasa ukimaliza hivo. Sasa unaimba ingine kama ya... <coughs> Now, sasa ile, sasa, because usha pata emotionally esteem, imaanza kurudi, kwa sababu, si, weni msafi. Sasa unaanza ile uh, chosen, jenere, kwa sababu, sasa, we, <laughs> unaanza na ile, hey, unaanga ile session, sasa ya guruka, kwa sababu umepata, sasa, esteem, imaanza kurudi. Because ulingia kama umebeat, ulingia church kama umechapa, because vitu umepitia yu wiki, na mambo umefanya ni noma. Hata ukitoka kwa keja sa hiyo, umeacha ka boyfi uko kako confused. So ukikuja hapa unashindu waki mimi na kaji. What am I doing? Lakini two hours sisi me kusafisha sasa. Sasa uko sawa. Sasa wanaanza ile set two. Chosen generation. Sasa waki build your ego like that, una feel like you can now demand. God, sitaki mchezo. Huh? Sasa wanasema, whatever you decree, you, you shall, conf, your confession is your possession. Praise God. Sasa unaingia hapo, Lord, I bring this and I bring that. Lord, I want your makeup. Nanataka your school fees. Nanataka your, uh, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Alafu unagundua, eh? Kuna kuanga na obstacle. Aiwezi kuja tu hivo. Sasa, pasta na kusomea na kuambia now. It is not of by flesh and blood. Huh? You shall put, there is an altar that is against what you have asked for. Yo vitu meitisha kuna altar. Praise God. My father's house. In Jesus' name, my mother's house. By fire, by fire, by... Huh? By fire, by thunder. By fire, by thunder. By fire, by thunder. Sindio? Yo in Africa around three. Around three, four. Hmm? No, no. Eh. Si tu machoka. Session ya chai ni sangapi. Eh? Kutoka hapo mwili na uma. Joins. Nini. When I do. And by the way, guys. Next Friday ni prayer. Ay. You always guja. Kwa za babo. Unaitaji. And, and and by and by the way na jua tu wengi wapendi prayer unaweza penda prayer kama hiyo i don't blame you lakini anakuambia it is hard work but it works na unajua vile wewe upendi hard work ndio anything <laughs> anything <laughs> anything that is related to hard work <laughs> 